And my lovely anatomist and physiologist, welcome back. Let's have a little conversation here, like a nice overview of the six activities of digestion. And I'm gonna write quite a bit on the screen. So I'm gonna go ahead and highlight my six activities. So we are talking about ingestion, propulsion, mechanical digestion, chemical digestion, absorption and defecation. So I mean, on some level, we could say these are the six jobs of the digestive tract. Yeah, I totally, I like that sort of idea quite a lot. Okay, so let's start with our ingestion. Ingestion is of course time I get enough stuff in your mouth, right? So, so really, um, ingestion is happening at your mouth, right? And what we're gonna see is really just when your food combines with your saliva, we're gonna call it your bolus. And we're gonna actually see mechanical and chemical digestion happening in the mouth with ingestion. And so I actually have, have it listed up with ingestion, but I, I think I don't wanna do that. I think I wanna move it down. So when we talk about mechanical digestion, one of the things that we'll see is what is called mastication. So pay attention to that word mastication. And what we're talking about there is just chewing. So when we get that food in our mouth, some of the digestion, some of the mechanical digestion is just the breakdown that's happening with our teeth and with the smishing that's happening with our tongue, right? And we also see some chemical digestion is happening there also. So we see that with the release of the saliva, we're gonna see some important enzymes are present um, in with that. Okay. So let's go ahead and list that we're at the mouth here with our chemical digestion. And if you wanted to, you could take an arrow from ingestion down to mechanical digestion, and you could take an arrow also to chemical digestion, just to show that first you get it in your mouth and then you immediately start doing some level of digesting. Propulsion is talking about the movement of food, which I'm going to put in quotation marks. We've talked about this. Your food is called food when it's outside the body. And then when you put it in your mouth and you mix it with saliva, we call it a bolus. And then we'll see when we put it in our stomach and combine with hydrochloric acid, we're going to call it chyme. So we're going to write that down in just a little bit of time. With propulsion, we'll say that it's going to actually start at the um, esophagus. And we're gonna see it starting with swallowing, which we can also now call deglutination. And I do feel like I wanna double check my spelling because you all know my spelling is atrocious. And of course, I'm adding extra letters in there. So there's just the one T and deglute in nation. Deglute nation means to swallow. And we'll be talking about there's three phases of swallowing. So we're going to be going into those steps in a little bit more detail and in, um, in a little bit of time. We'll see that there's a movement of food involves a type of movement that's called peristalsis. And let's actually highlight peristalsis. So for peristalsis, we can think about this as sequential.
alternating waves of contraction and relaxation. So here, think about having a tube and then squeeze, 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 squeeze until the materials move through. Your best example, probably something most of us are using a couple of times a day, once a day, you know, when we're lucky is a toothpaste. So toothpaste is mostly sold in a tube. And with, with that, you know, you have to, if you start at the back of the tube, you squeeze until you get your toothpaste coming out of the end, right? So that would be, I think, a pretty good example for us of peristalsis. When we get down to mechanical digestion, we've already mentioned mastication, which is our fancy word for chewing, but we'll also see a special type of movement called segmentation. And let's highlight that one as a different type of movement. So with the segmentation movement, you're gonna move contents back and forth. And so we're gonna see this at both the stomach and we're gonna see this at the small intestine, which I'm abbreviating SI. So in the case of the mechanical digestion and the segmentation, what we can think about here is if you have material in a sack and you squeeze, 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 squeeze. So here I'm, I'm showing like I squeeze with my left hand and then I squeeze with my right and then I squeeze with my left and then I squeeze with my right and then I squeeze with my left and I squeeze with my right. And so the material is like sloshing because it's a liquid sloshing back and forth between like left hand, right hand, left hand, right hand kind of example. And so the material is being mixed. So this is gonna be important and like get in all of that food stuff in contact with all of the different enzymes and so forth that are present and important in the chemical digestion. So that takes us next to chemical digestion. So with the chemical digestion, we've already said that it starts at the mouth with the saliva and then we'll see it really continuing in the stomach. And then we'll see it really happening in the duodenum and the jejunum. And the duodenum and jejunum are the first and second portions of the small intestines. If you wanna remind yourself, small intestine. And when we talk about the stomach, Remember here, we can use the word chyme to talk about bolus plus the hydrochloric acid that's gonna be present in the stomach. And hydrochloric acid is gonna be an important part of our chemical digestion. When we talk about absorption, what we're actually talking about here is getting the nutrient from the digestive tract into the bloodstream. So absorption is from specifically the jejunum into the blood. Okay. And we do see, let's make another note. I'm going to use my green again. Remember that the lipid is going to move into the lymphatic system. But remember, lymphatic system dumps into the left and right subclavian veins and so ultimately gets back to the bloodstream. So the original statement is not completely wrong. Um, and we'll see that all of this activity at the jejunum is really, we're talking about majority of the water and the nutrients that are being absorbed. There's a small amount of absorption happening at the large intestine, but not really a whole lot. When we're talking about this absorption, we'll see that material is going to move 
out of the digestive tract using either active transport, co-transport, which is just talking about exchange. So you exchange one for the other. Some material can move through passive diffusion, which it means, of course, we're going directly across that phospholipid bilayer without any kind of helper. Facilitated transport. So co-transport is like a kind of a method of facilitated transport and endocytosis. So just, you know, remember all of those different transport mechanisms that we talked about way back AMP1, chapter three, when we talked about some membrane. And remember, it depends on the type of molecule. So if it's, if it's um, a nonpolar molecule and it's small, it's going to be able to do passive diffusion. If it's a polar molecule and it's large, then it's going to need to have some sort of help. And if we're moving against a concentration gradient, um, or if the concentration gradient is not steep enough, we might need to employ active transport. The final, the final activity of digestion is to get rid of waste. And so that's our process of defecation. So this is just the removal of the undigested material and um, like metabolic waste. There's a little bit of metabolic waste here. Um, I'm just gonna say like some. We talked about some, we talked about the recycling of the red blood cell and the kind of processing of bilirubin, urcobilins and stercobilins. We said a lot of that material leaves in the feces. And so defecation is dealing with um, getting rid of the undigested material. And then we just talk about this as feces. All right, up next, let's talk a little bit more detail about the smooth muscle that's involved in these movements of peristalsis and segmentation. So stay tuned. As always, take care of yourselves and each other.